How do you turn eight colonies of bees into 15? It's simple, you're making splits. A split is just like it sounds. You take a colony of bees and you split it. About a week and a half ago, I split most of my colonies. There were a couple colonies that just weren't strong enough to be able to split into two. In at least one case, I split one colony into three. Of course, in a colony, you have only one queen. So when you split it, one of those colonies is going to be queenless. You put the queen in the colony you take away from your original location. In that original location, they will keep the forager bees, but they won't have a queen. So you have to give that colony at least one frame of brood that has very young larvae and prefer preferably eggs. In the other colony, they're going to have the queen. So she can begin laying right away, but they're not going to have any foragers because you're putting them in a different location. So you kind of give each colony a little bit of a benefit. The colony with the foragers is going to continue bringing in resources. The colony with the queen is going to be able to produce brood split. There are other methods for doing splits and you can find all sorts of information about different techniques. But what I do is typically considered a walk away split where you divide the colony and then you walk away, let the new colony make a queen. They will take a cell with an egg or with a new larvae up to three days old and they can make that into a new queen. When a queen lays eggs, she lays two types of eggs. She lays either a female egg, which can become a worker or a queen, or she can lay a male egg, which becomes a drone. That female egg will typically become a worker, but the worker bees can choose to make a queen. Every bee, when they hatch from the egg, are fed royal jelly. Most of those larvae, after three days, are no longer fed royal jelly. At that point, they get bee bread. But if they're making a queen, they feed that queen larvae a continuous diet of royal jelly up until the point that she enters the pupa stage, which is when the cell is capped over. A queen cell is slightly different because it's bigger than a regular worker cell. From the outside, it kind of looks like a peanut hanging off the side of the frame. So today I'm going around and I'm checking for queen cells. At this point, if a colony has not made a queen cell, they are no longer going to have larvae that's young enough to make a queen from. So in that case, we will need to give them a new frame of brood that they can try again to make a queen. At the same time, as, I, as I'm inspecting the hives, I'm gonna be checking to see if any of the colonies are thin on any resources or in need of anything. I'm going to start with the cosmic hive, the swarm that I caught last spring. These bees have just blown me away. Last year, being their first year after I caught the swarm, they produced harvestable honey, which is pretty remarkable for a first year colony. Going into winter, I thought I was going to lose this colony because they threw a bunch of dead bees out from the entrance and I thought they had just lost too much of their population. Contrary to what I was expecting, they have been super active. Temps get into the, the low 40s or sometimes even in the 30s, this colony is active. At the same time, they have been a very gentle colony to work. So I've got gentle bees that winter well and are very productive. I want to keep these genetics. I have split this colony from one into three. The colony on the left is their original location. That's the side that has kept the foragers. I moved the queen all the way to the right. So she is as far away from the original colony as possible uh, within the same box. And then in the middle, I put a set of frames that has brood and resources, but that colony kind of is getting the worst of the deal because they don't have the queen and they aren't getting the foragers, except for some who might have strayed over there. You can see today all three are pretty active and that's a good thing because it takes a little time for the colonies that don't have the foragers to really kind of get active. I'm watching that entrance on the right to see if there seems to be any aggression there because I did check on this hive a few days ago because I had not seen any activity for a while. And when I checked in that colony on the right, the one that has the queen, they were completely out of resources and I think they had gotten robbed out. I gave them a frame of honey and I've been watching them since. I haven't seen significant robbing activity, but what I'm seeing right now, the activity that's there right now is the most I've seen from that hive lately. We'll check and see how they're doing. When I checked on them, they were clean of resources, but they still had the queen. They still had a fair number of bees. 
So I wasn't panicked, but we're going to need to watch for them and see if there's anything that they need. One thing that's great about the Layens Hive is that even though this is a 20 frame hive, it's a variable space. You can give the bees just as much space as they need and no more, or you can use the space to subdivide into multiple colonies, just like I've done here. So I've got three colonies with five frames each. And you have the divider boards that keep them separate. And this is the frame of honey, and uh, they still have honey on there. They've chewed, they've opened up some of those cells, but they are still okay with resources right now. There's also some bee bread on there. So I know they have some honey and bee bread, not too concerned about that. I'm looking to see if the queen is laying. This first frame is just a partial frame that uh, I added in here. And it looks like these bees are kind of building out those cells. So uh, they're just kind of doing some cell repair and preparing that comb for use. Looks like they actually have some nectar in there, but I'm not seeing any brood. I only have two frames left, so I'm not real pleased that I'm not seeing brood on there yet. These bees are gonna need to start producing more bees because their population is not real strong. I may need to give them a frame of brood to get them going. And I did not see my queen. That would be kind of a tragic thing if I lost this hive, except that I have the potential of making two other hives with these genetics. She was starting to build up really quickly this spring. So I'm real surprised if she's still in here that I don't see any evidence of laying. I'm not sure what happened there. I'm sure not finding her. I'll make a note to uh, add a frame of brood in there. We'll find a frame from another hive. If the queen is still in there, at least we can boost their population a little bit. If the queen is gone, we'll give them an opportunity to make a new one. So moving on to this center colony. So this first frame is just an additional frame I added. So nothing much there. And they really have not built that out much. That's not surprising since they are not in the location to keep their foragers, I wouldn't expect them to be bringing in a whole lot of nectar yet. So we got a lot of bees working on this frame. It looks like there's still some cat brood on this frame underneath these bees. And because there's cat brood, it's possible there's queen cells on there. So we'll do a little brushing aside. There's some more cat brood on this side. They have a queen cup right here, but it's open. It's like they started on it and nothing came of it, but not seeing any queen cells. I see cat brood over here. Gave these bees plenty of brood. And there we have a queen cell right there sticking out. And another one, a little bit smaller one up above here, right there. We've got two more over here. Three more, one there, one there, one there, four more, one there. So I may be able to pull some of those cells and put into the colony we just inspected. We got pretty good cat brood on this side, but no queen cells. And then this final frame is another, basically a spacer. One thing I noticed in here, they don't have a lot of resources and it's not surprising, but they probably should have some more. This frame has a little weight to it. I'm gonna kind of look at the top here and see if they have much nectar and they really don't. Now we're on to the colony that's in the original location. And I apologize for the shadow here. You got the shadow from my uh, weather station and uh, hopefully that won't be too distracting. We'll still be able to see what's going on. This is the colony that retained the foragers. From just opening this up, it looks like they have a pretty decent population right there. The bees hanging down off of that comb. And this frame has some heft to it. There's a little cat brood down at the bottom. Looks like a small queen cell and an unfinished queen cup over here. Another queen cup there. There's a bump out there. It looks like they might have attempted to make a queen cell. Ah, but here, we got a pretty nice looking queen cell right there. Another queen cell right there. So on this side, we've got a queen cup down at the lower at my left, be your right. So we got more cat brood on here. Not seeing any queen cells on this frame. Oh, and I see some cells bumped out here. I don't know if I would really consider those quote viable queen cells, but down here, here we are. Got a pretty decent looking queen cell right there. So this looks like a good frame that we can take and give to that, uh, that other hive. So if we take that frame with the queen cell and the nurse bees that are on there, we should be able to give a boost to that other hive. Got a whole lot of bees festooning. I don't know if you can see all that on camera, but uh, they are just like a curtain of bees hanging down. I'm going to uh, do a little swap here. I'm gonna move this frame over to that other colony, replace it with a frame of empty comb and put back over here. So I'll get that done and then we'll move on to the next hive. The under the sea hive was not split as radically as the cosmic hive. This was more traditional. The original location for the colony was on the left 
and I moved the queen and frames of resources to the colony on the right and left the foragers and some frames of brood on the left. So hopefully the colony on your left has made some queen cells and hopefully the colony on the right is thriving and the queen is laying. So let's see how they're doing. I'm going to start with the colony that has the queen and check on them, do a welfare check and see if she is producing brood. First glance, it looks like we've got a pretty good population of bees. I see some nectar glistening in there. I see some capped honey. So they are not short on resources. And uh, I have seen this colony, you know, like is typical with the colony that loses its foragers, there wasn't much activity for the first few days, but they have gotten more active. Basically just a honey frame. They're pretty much filling that up with nectar in the middle and some bee bread. So we've got some uh, cap brood on there and I do see some larvae in here. So our queen is probably still laying in here. I see some eggs in these cells. Our queen might be right around here someplace. About the timing of splits, you wanna wait until the bees have a fairly good nectar flow that they can provide for themselves, but you could overcome that with feeding. But what you can't overcome is whether there are drones for the queens to mate with. You don't want to make a hive make queens and not have them be able to get mated. So that was one thing I checked for before I started making splits is that the colonies were making drones and they were. But you also wanna watch your weather forecast because the queens won't really go on their mating flights until the temperatures are about 70 degrees. There's my queen is right there, got a little white marking. You don't want your queens to have to wait too long. They have a, a window when they can get well mated. And so you want there to be drones and you wanna have good temperatures. And it looks like over the next coming week or so when the queens would be emerging and then about three days after they emerge, they will take their mating flights. It looks like we'll have reasonable weather for that. So it's a little bit of a risk trying to split early, but I'm hoping that it's gonna pay off. This last frame, this is a frame I had cut out the comb from last year, and so I left just a strip of comb at the top, and that is what the bees have built down from. So that's all new comb there. So this hive appears to be doing well. The queen is laying, and they're gonna get things started strong. Again, this is uh, a colony that kept all the foragers, gave them a couple frames of brood. I don't remember exactly how many. Tried to give them enough frames of brood that they would be able to maintain their population for a while and have enough candidate brood to make a new queen. So here we've got a lot of bees festooning down there, a lot of comb building out. I think this may all be new comb as well. Not much stored up on there, but they're certainly building it out. So we got a whole cluster of drone cells down here. Got some cap brood towards the top middle of the frame. Not seeing any queen cells on there yet. We had more drone cells down at that bottom corner there on the uh, mirror image side of what we had on the other side. Got another big cluster of brood comb or drone comb on this frame. Some worker brood and I found what I'm looking for. So right here, hopefully you can see it all right. We got a nice big peanutty queen cell right there. So that's a good one. We got a couple of queen cells right down here. Quite a bit of cat brood there, but I'm not seeing any more queen cells. So we're looking good there. They've got good prospects for making a queen and we'll move on to the next hive. Now we're onto the green hive and this hive was split in the same way as uh, the under the sea hive. I had one colony in this end and I moved half of that colony to the other end. However, it was done a little bit differently. If you've watched my previous video on how to do a split in the Layens hive, then you saw me demonstrate a method to put the colony in the middle, let the bees get accustomed to that location, and then split and move half of the colony to one end and half to the other. Because the bees had oriented to that middle entrance, then half of the foragers should theoretically go one way and half go the other, because you're gonna close that middle entrance and they're going to kind of go either direction looking for a way in. And I did that last year and it worked well. I started doing it this year. I actually moved the colony to the middle, but then as I checked the weather forecast and saw drones and wanted to get these colonies split, I went ahead and did the split before the bees had fully oriented to that middle location. So most of the bees were still oriented to the end here towards the camera and none really to the other end. So I did that split. Something else I did differently is that in the other hive, I took the queen and put her in the end away from 
the entrance that the foragers were accustomed to. And I would have done the same here, except I didn't find the queen. So um, the colony was already big. They built up quickly this spring, a lot of bees. And so I ended up just moving frames to each end, kind of splitting the, the colony and putting frames on each end. So uh, this may be a little bit of a gamble, but let's see what we have inside. Let's start out at the end that doesn't have foragers. We'll just kind of see how they are doing. This first frame is just a little frame of starter comb that I put in here and they've started building down from that. This colony is big enough. I actually have 12 frames total in here. So each side got six frames. This frame has some cat brood there. Uh, they got some nectar up here and some more cat brood over here, but uh, no queen cells. And I don't even know yet if they need them. I am not seeing any other brood. Oh, <laughs> I'm lying. They got a queen cell right there, right in front of my face. And it's a pretty nice looking queen cell. Nice, nice peanutty looking thing. So this must be our end without the queen. So now we'll just check and kind of see how they're doing with resources. I think we kind of already know. We already see that they have some nectar in there. They're bringing in resources. They've got some brood yet to emerge. They've got a pretty decent population, got some more brood on there, but it looks like mainly all cap brood with a little bit of honey across the top or a little nectar across the top, I should say. They got some practice cups over here, not really making anything of them. It's got more nectar at the top there. Not a lot of brood, got a drone, a couple drones, three, a few drones around on there, four. Five, mostly emerged brood that they're kind of filling back up with nectar now. A little bit of bee bread in there. And there we've got more cat brood. They are getting productive already this year. We're not really into a strong flow, but they're finding resources and bringing them in. This last frame, there are some brood cells on there. Looks like there may be some drone cells. There's also a couple attempted queen cups, but uh, nothing came of them. So it looks like they have just one queen cell, which one's all they need. Hopefully that one uh, will turn out well for them. So this should be my queen right end. So we'll check and see how they're doing. First frame they're building out. It's a fairly heavy frame. I can see larvae in there and some cat brood. They're just covered with bees on this side. Got some cat brood. This has more larvae in it. Just such a strong population of bees in this hive. That's fantastic. Some drone brood on there, more cat brood. We got enough brood in here that, uh, and I'm seeing larvae. I think we're doing pretty well. Now this one has a big pocket of drone brood down at the bottom. Otherwise it looks like it's mainly nectar and bee bread. Lots of bee bread on this side. Lots of pollen stored up there in the middle. I'm sure the queen is around here someplace, just not spotting her. And not much on this frame. But that is all new comb this year. So things are looking pretty good in this hive. It would be nice to see them have more than one queen cell, but one is really all they need. Uh, it's just kind of to provide a little insurance, I guess. But uh, so far, looking pretty good. So let's close it up and move on to the next hive. Now we're on to Taj Mahal. Since I've had the hive, I've had two colonies in it. It'll hold up to 30 layens frames, which has given me enough space to house two colonies. And so I have the hives numbered. Uh, I have hives one, two, and three. And hive two had never had a colony in it until now. So as I'm doing these splits, I took the colony that is in hive three and I moved the queen and uh, some resources to the middle, to hive two. And then I left, of course, the foragers and some brood frames in hive one, and hopefully they will be making a new queen. Let's open them up and see how they're doing. Well, initially it looks like there's a pretty good population in here. First frame was just a uh, frame of starter comb and they haven't really done a whole lot of building on it yet. So plenty of bees to cover this frame. Cat brood on here. Not seeing any queen cells. Not yet at least. We got some drone brood on there. Now yeah, there's a queen cell down there but it's not closed. So I can't tell if there's anything in it. We've got an intact queen cell right here. Got a pretty good looking one too. And maybe another one right behind it. Got another one right up here. So that's pretty good. Oh my, there's another queen cell. Nice looking queen cell there. I have to get a picture of that one. That one's a 
textbook. So I'm really happy with what I found in today's inspection. The battery on the camera went dead on Hive 2, and sorry about that. So you didn't get to see the last few hives I looked at. But just in summary, all of the colonies from the splits that did not have a queen have queen cells now. And the only bad thing, if you want to call it that, that I found is that first colony that we looked at that had a low population. They should have had a queen, but I couldn't find her. And they had almost no resources except for the one frame of honey that I had put in there before. I took one frame that had some queen cells, gave it to that colony, and hopefully now they'll make a queen. I got a bee that is persistently <laughs> trying to get me out of her area. So I'm gonna wrap this up quickly. And uh, just thank you for coming along. And uh, oh, there she landed on my hand. We'll see if she's, uh... well, oh, they're bothering me. I went and got my smoker so I can maybe make a little bit of a smoke screen here and uh, keep those bees from bugging me while I wrap this up. But uh, anyway, I thank you for coming along today and watching through these inspections. If you haven't split your hives in the past, this will be an encouragement that uh, when it's time for you to make splits that you'll have some confidence to do that. If you did enjoy this video, I appreciate if you would give it a like, and you might also like this other video that Google has selected for you. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time. All right, B, I'm done.